Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and welcome to part four of my Hardstyle Kick tutorial series. Now, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you go back and watch starting at part one, because if you don't, you're missing out on a lot of good information, and you might be kind of lost. And the link to the playlist is in the description. Okay, so let's get started. In this part, I'm going to be telling you all about different layering techniques that you will use to get the final polished kick sound. So for this example, I have a layer right here that has four parts. Now you might have more parts or you might have less parts depending on your kick project and depending on kind of how you want to do things. But for this kick, I have four parts. And, you know, when you're layering, you kind of want to think of your kick in parts. So you can see for this kick, I have a separate parts for the talk and then separate parts for the bass tail. So if I mute the bass tail, you can hear just the talk. And if I turn on the bass tail, you'll hear just the bass tail. And for both the talk and the bass tail, I have something for the high end, as well as something for the more mid and the body. So you can hear the bass tail. It has a really good deep character to it but it doesn't have any high end. So what I did is I continued processing and just got a specific sound for only that high end that the kick is missing. And you know, on their own, they both sound kind of bad, but when you put them together, you get that full bass tail sound. And this talk would actually be pretty good on its own, but I layered it with another high end to help it blend in with the rest of the kick. And you can hear that's, you know, hardly anything, but it helps get the final sound. And yeah, so as I said, you might have more parts or less parts. Um, some people use a lot of different parts, but I personally don't often use that many. Um, usually I will have one or two for the talk and then uh, just one or two for the bass tail. And that's usually only if the bass tail is lacking that high end, as this one is. So all of the layers you're going to make using the techniques from the previous parts. So anything for the tail is going to be the distortion from part two, and anything for the talk might be part two combined with part three. And you know, it's, it's really up to you to get these sounds. Um, but what you could do is, if you had a layer like this, and you wanted some more high end to it, you could um, process this final sound and process it in a way so that you end up getting a layer kind of like this, and then layer them together. Now, while you're layering, it's really important to adjust things, to move things around and play with the phases because, you know, audio isn't just one plus one equals two. Um, you have positive and negative values that will kind of take away from each other and different phase relations will cause different sounds. So it's really important to play with things that will adjust the phase relations of your layers. So to do this, there are 
three things that I will regularly use. And the first is polarity inversion. So in the FL Studio channel settings, I can do polarity inversion by clicking reverse polarity here. And you can see that the waveform is, it's just, it's just being flipped over the center line there. And you can hear if I play the bass tail. You know, it sounds different. If you listen carefully, it has quite a different character from inverting the polarity. And that's probably the most drastic option there is to change the phase relations. Uh, other than that, what you can do is change the timing. So, you know, I can just do really slight adjustments to the timing of the waveforms. And you can hear they're really phasing, not um, in a bad way there. But maybe if I do the talk instead, I can get a better So that's, you know, it's really subtle um, on the talk, but it's a lot less subtle on the bass tail. And, you know, this is especially important if you have a decent amount of high end in both of your waveforms, because then really tiny adjustments will be very important. And the last kind of method that I use is to change the pitch. Now, you really don't want to change the pitch very much at all because, you know, you'll start having detuned sound. So, really, I just do very slight pitch changes, uh, usually below 50 cents at the max. So if you listen in carefully, you can hear that even just these tiny pitch changes really change the character. And if I do it too much, it's actually not that noticeable in this example, but um, sometimes you'll really hear that it sound detuned and that's not necessarily what you want. So you know, those are the kind of things that you really want to play around with while you're layering to get the best sound possible. If you're layering a bass with your kick for one reason or another, usually because your kick kind of lasts bass, you know, um, in the synthesizer that you're layering the bass with, you want to get the phase to match using the phase knob. And you should be able to get it to match up just by adjusting the phase knob. And so I'll be giving you a bit of an example with this kick here. So if I want to have a little bit more of a bass sustain, What I want to do is So what I want to do is match up the pitch first and then I don't want the bass to start right away with the kick. I want it to kind of have this envelope coming in. And then 
I want it to sustain pretty well and then eventually fade out. And you'll be able to see in here, now when I change the phase, how it affects the sound. So you can hear there, it's become a lot less powerful than it was. Um, right when the kick hits. And that's just because there was some phase cancellation going on. And so, you know, just adjust the phase until you get the strongest sound. So you can hear this one's even weaker over here. And yeah. So that's one way that you can either boost the entire bass or just the sustained bass. So like this kick, the bass doesn't sustain that well and I want it to sustain better. So what I've done is I've created this volume envelope to counteract the decay of the original sample to kind of have it sustain more. Now if you want to have multiple tones sustained more, um, in the bass specifically, what I would recommend is duplicating the sample and then link it to a channel and I turned off HQ because of latency reasons and then you know just filter off the high end until you're only left with um, the frequencies that you want boosted. And then once you have that, you want to put on the volume envelope. So really, I just want to boost the end of it. And now you'll hear, here's the original sound. And I'll turn this off a bit. Yeah, that just gives it a more sustained, a more powerful bass. And I mean, you could use multi-band compression or normal compression for this. But I just really like to do this technique because I feel like I have more control over everything this way. And then finally, while you're doing your layer, um, there sometimes might be certain parts of the kick that you don't want pitched uh, that actually extend into the bass tail. So this isn't very common. I don't really have this happen often at all. but you know, you might have a very long talk tail that you don't want to pitch. And so that's just something to think about. You might, you know, pitch the tail separately and then do the layering after you've pitched the tail. But yeah, once you have your kick layered together so it sounds how you want, you can move on to step five. Thanks for watching my tutorial video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch new videos as soon as I upload them. After that, check out the Beat School website. I'll have the link in the description. All my tutorials are organized on the site so that you can easily find what you need by browsing through the different categories. There are also a ton of awesome resources to help you in every aspect of music production. And if you want to help support me, you can buy any of my sample packs, preset packs, or project files for only $5 or less. This gets you some great sounds for a great price and allows me to spend more time making these tutorials and working on the website. Thanks again for watching my video and have a great day.